order for Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. This meeting will be held virtually beginning at 5.15 p.m. Reading of the open meeting notice. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through the any medium attendees and therefore advise that such recordings and transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable and permissible. Roll call of commissioners. Victor Farias. Ellen Rigo. Jeffrey Shovio. Amber Burns. Joseph De Silva. At this time, I'd like to have Commissioner Farias do the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody can stay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for Georgia which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. <laughs> Just a couple of uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, Commissioner Burns and Commissioner Farias might have to leave this meeting a little early due to prior commitments. So if they have to check out on us, we all know why. Well, myself, Commissioner Rigo, and Commissioner Sylvia will be here for the duration of the meeting. And hopefully the uh, other two members as well. Hey. Acceptance of the minutes from January 25th, 2021 meeting. And I get a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. And I get a second. Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner De Silva. Yes. Citizen input. We received one citizen input. Correct, uh, Ms. Smith. That's correct. Okay, I'm going to read this uh, open meeting. Uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, citizen input from Colin Dias, 560, five Colin, uh, Colin Dias, 560 Ray Street, Fort River, Massachusetts, 02720. Fort River Park Board, 23, uh, 2021 minutes, uh, uh, minutes for citizen input. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Do you have that with you? Yes, I have a copy with me. Can you read that for me, please? I'm sorry. Sure. The citizen input is from Colin Dyes, 560 Ray Street, Fall River, Mass. Uh, Fall River Park Board, 2-3-2021. Um, meetings, citizen input. Good afternoon, members of the Fall River Park Board. I wish to express my displeasure with the park board failing to rescind its illegal policy of a total ban on political activity in our city parks. The political ban is completely illegal and would be deemed such in court if and when challenged. A city can place reasonable restrictions on public assemblies as long as they are just and fair, such as requiring permits, requiring the approximate number of people, the time, the place, a fee, etc. People holding political style ra rallies in parks all the time. It is a protest, it is a protected, I'm sorry, it is a protected First Amendment public forum. And I don't care what rule the park board passed, that rule is illegal. With that being said, if and when COVID dies down to the point where public assembly can be safe, and I want to hold a public rally in the parks if I run for city council, I am going to do so without the park board's permission because they <laughs> currently banned is illegal. The Fall River Park Board needs to develop new rules for political rallies in the park that are fair, just, equitable, and most of all legal. Thank you very much for your time. Respectfully submitted, Colin Dias. Thank you. A new business. Item A is a proposal for Kathy Assad Playground design by I think we have Rodney here for this. Hello, how is everyone doing tonight? Not bad. 
Um, does everyone have a, uh, I'm assuming everyone has a copy of the um, conceptual plan for the Kathy Assad Park? Yes, Rodney, it was distributed in their package, the, the drawing that you sent. Okay, uh, so uh, just like last week with uh, Damaris, I'm gonna uh, just quickly uh, run through the conceptual uh, plan, what we're planning to do. And if there's any questions, I, I, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, as we've done at, at, at a lot of parks throughout the city, we're gonna replace, again, I'm, I apologize. I'm looking at my screen here on the side. We're gonna replace the basketball court with a new basketball court, uh, new asphalt, new painting, um, new hoops, new two, new team benches. Uh, we're gonna remove the existing playground or what, what's left of a playground there and install a new playground equipment. Um, again, similar to the equipment that we uh, did at Etna Street Park. Um, and then the only other addition we have here is uh, um, a proposed splash pad, which is uh, the same splash pad we're proposing here as what we did at Chu Park and Pulaski Park. It's um, it's a, it's relatively speaking, it's fairly small. There's four uh, benches that are on the perimeter. Um, we also added a, a concrete walkway. Uh, you can see through the park from Wamsutta Street. Uh, it goes kind of towards the middle of the park. There's an um, accessible picnic table there and a larger concrete pad so people can uh, have lunch or sit on a bench. And then the, the, the walkway continues on to Massasoit Street on the other side. Um, we're putting new trash cans and um, I think that's about, oh, I'm sorry, a new fence as well. There's a 10 foot fence around the basketball court, which is gonna get replaced. And then a six foot fence around the rest of the property, which is gonna get replaced with a new six foot fence. Great, any uh, commissioners have any uh, questions? I have a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve it. Do I have a second. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, commissioners. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia. You got to unmute yourself, Jeff. Yes. Thank you. And Commissioner De Silva. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before you go on, I have a question. Go ahead. For some reason, I got bounced out during citizen import. What was the result of that? Uh, was it referred to Corporation Council or what was the we just action accepted. of the board? We just accepted it, correct? Ms. Smith. The board made no motion. The board just no, read the yeah, citizen just, input. Choose to accept and place on file, that's something that the board can do. I would recommend that you do that. I'm not really sure how they handle citizen input, but I would say to better safe okay. than sorry to accept the okay. correspondence and place it on file. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept uh, place on file? Motion to place on file. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Silva. Yes. Commissioner Farris. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. So, Commissioner De Silva, can I ask who the motion and second were? I got uh, Commissioner I Rigo. Commi Commissioner Rigo uh, made the motion. Commissioner Sylvia seconded. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Item B, request uh, for... Uh, oh. I'm sorry, I apologize. Are there any more issues no. with... Ro Ronnie, you're all set. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a good yeah, night, good everyone. Night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item B, request fulfillment at Oak Grove Cemetery. Mr. Pirano. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we got a request from Crazy Legs Productions um, on behalf of um, a Major Network looking to do filming in Oak Grove Cemetery um, at the Lizzie Borden grave. 
Um, it's the 17 person uh, crew and cast, which includes two cameras, uh, small battery powered lights, a sound person. Um, they have submitted um, both the location access agreement and certificate of insurance. And that has been submitted uh, to Corporation Council for review and approval. They're looking to film uh, tomorrow uh, in the morning, if possible. We have any questions from Commissioner, Commissioner Sylvia? Uh, what network is it? Do you know, Chris? Uh, they did not say specifically. Okay. Any other commissioners? I have a motion. Has Corporation, oh, has Corporation okay. Council reviewed this yet? Um, pulling up an email from him right now. I believe he has, um, but I will make sure that everything is all squared away um, in the morning before they're granted permission. Do you know what time they uh, are planning to be there? I believe around 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you. I yield. Any other commissioners? Hey, do I have a motion to accept this and give them permission? Motion. To accept okay. Right. okay. Roll call vote of commissioners. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. Okay, item C. Architect Oak Grove Cemetery Expansion Plan. Here, Chris. Okay. So just uh, by means of introduction, um, as most of you know, or all of you know, uh, Oak Grove is uh, currently uh, operating with limited um, space for interments as well as new sales. Um, we've recently, the water department and sewer department has recently completed a CSO project that's left us um, just over an acre of land. Um, previous to tonight's meeting and um, previous to a few members of the board, Joining, we interviewed and reviewed bids um, from three qualified firms to uh, be a consultant and provide um, proposals for a layout and design of that new area. Um, the board and department chose BSC um, for a number of reasons, including their experience in historic cemeteries, um, their approach of having both engineers and landscape architects um, involved in the process. Um, and um, at that, I will leave it to um, both Mr. Crispin and if I'm pronouncing it right, Mr. Eisner, um, who will give a presentation on their qualifications and the expansion as well. Sounds good. I'm gonna share my screen here. Hopefully, you guys seeing this? Yes. Yes. Slide yes. show from the beginning. We'll get rid of the little side things. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Crispin. I'm a civil engineer and a land surveyor with the BSC group, of, uh, home based in Boston. Although for the last nine months working out of our kitchen tables, like many other consultants, not in the offices. Uh, Jeff is my right hand man uh, in uh, putting plans together. And just a, a very little bit about the BSC group. I'm not going to dwell on this, but we are a professional engineering group, landscape architects, land surveyors, and we have six offices in Mass, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. Uh, probably most important in our qualifications package is that we have been long-term active members in the Massachusetts Cemetery Association and the New England Cemetery Association. And I have actually acted as the supplier liaison for the last 15 years. So I have a lot of contacts in the, in the business. And on a, on a personal note, I started digging graves at Blue Hills and Braintree in 1971. And I'm still a part-time employee there uh, in addition to the civil engineering land survey work that we do at BSC. Um, so you could do the math, that's 50 years in cemeteries. Um, this is a very quick screenshot of one of my, uh, my Google pin maps. It just kind of gives you an idea of how many different cemeteries we've worked on in Eastern Massachusetts in the last uh, 15 years or so. And I joined BSC in 1983. So um, it's kind of consistent. We've, we've developed a nice little understanding of cemeteries. 
with that being said, I'd like to jump right into the, the, uh, the, the subject matter here. Uh, the cemetery is about 120 acres total. And we are going to talk about this 1.4 acres in the upper right hand corner. This is uh, Oak Grove Road right up here along the right side of this. And just so you can see it in a little different fashion, a little clearer. This is the office where you come in over here on the far left. And we're in the back left hand corner as you would drive back by Oak Grove. There's no new entrances proposed out onto the, uh, the public ways. This is all internal. Um, back in August, when we first started this, one of the first things we did was a topographic survey and that industry is changing dramatically. Uh, when I started, it was a transit and, uh, and tape. Now it's drones. And this is one of the drone shots uh, of the cemetery. And you can see our survey van parked there. Um, and, and from that drone survey, well, just another quick screen view. If you haven't been out there lately, um, there's it's not much to write home about out there. It's, it's pretty rough looking left and right. It's just cleared and gravel. And this is the paved road. Obviously, we were there on a rainy day, but um, from a development aspect, a pretty easy site to work on. Um, but as I said, from the drone survey, we have building locations. We have topography. We have edge of pavements. Um, from the uh, drainage project that recently went in, we know where all the utilities are. There's a water line coming off the street here. We have contours and we were able to uh, put all of the existing graves in. So we have a very good picture of what's out there to start from. Um, whoops, going back too fast. Um, Chris said, uh, you're working on limited inventory and he really was not kidding. I'm not gonna go into all the facts on this, but there's basically 214 graves left and they're selling 52 per year. So in four years, they're gonna be out of space. We don't, I don't think we need to go into single graves, two grave lots, cremation lots, niches. And they did just put a new little niche unit in. So that, that was very nice. So they've made the jump to um, niches for cremation units. So what are we talking about for a proposed plan? Um, no new roadways, first of all. Um, the, this is the existing pavement. Um, we, some of this 18 foot buffer has shrubbery and, and landscaping in it. Some of it does not. So we're gonna, gonna bolster that and end up with an 18 foot buffer. Um, there is a row of single graves across the back. These smaller squares, we can detail this in a minute, are cremation lots, flush markers. Then there's a row of cremation lots with upright markers. These are all two grave, what's called a companion grave. Uh, which are back-to-back -back monuments, which puts about 20 feet between each headstone, very much like here. These are back-to-back -back, uh, monuments across the street. And I, I'm sure Chris could attest that is wonderful from lawn mowing because you just go in and out, you got plenty of room. You can bring a backhoe in, you can bring a truck in. There's, there's plenty of room to work in there and maintain things. So from a maintenance point of view, that's, that's, that's good. Just from... Uh, restrictions there is a easement you see these yellow lines that restricts no graves in there and there's a drainage easement coming down here so no graves in there um, you can put driveways and walkways and whatnot over that but you can't really put burials in there because you might have to fix the drain line someday um, we chris and i had several conversations and went back and forth and and you can see a little better this back-to-back -back monument idea. You can see the cremation lots, which are quite small with a, an upright marker, cremation lot with a flush marker, and then a full size uh, single grave with an upright marker. And the idea is to put lawn crypts, well, I'll explain later, that's a pre-installed concrete box in this back row across the back. Uh, changes the operation a little bit. And every so often, we're going to have a six-foot walkway coming in. And just schematically, this is a, uh, a niche wall with some kind of an obelisk. We're thinking maybe eight or 10-foot high obelisk. This will give the site some vertical uh, relief as opposed to uh, the every, you know, two and a half foot tall gravestones everywhere. It, it'll just give it some, uh, some, some features. So from a standard memorial uh, grave option, Everybody's kind of seen these. This is a typical two grave lot or multiple grave headstone. It's got a, a bottom piece and a top piece called a base and a die. And the, the cremation lots uh, might have a smaller lot. This is only about two feet wide. It might have what's called a slant marker on it, 
or it might have a flat marker. So there are choices that will be available. And that's really what this whole design is about. It's about choices uh, for the general public when they come in and buy a grave. Um, Chris uh, mentioned, uh, earlier mentioned uh, 52 graves per year over the last five years. It's been pretty steady. About 42 of those have been cream, full casket graves. And those are, you know, that's, that's a full casketed uh, interment and 10 cremation graves. Um, so that's uh, a little below where I would expect the cremation graves, but it might have something to do with not a lot of options on cremations. Um, so we're going to create about 1,990, uh, 1,190 graves being created, which because some of these will take two caskets, some of them will take two urns. Um, that's about 2,380 interment capacity. And we can, that's single depth long crypts. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. The companion side-by-side -side graves, cremation graves with flush markers, cremation with slant or upright markers, and then cremation niches. And we've, we've given this a mix on purpose, it represents about 20 years of sales. Um, this is a rendering of a 3D drawing of what this would, would look like. Uh, this back row, the houses are up in the, in the back here, uh, are the single grave lots. So the headstones get quite, quite close together like this. It almost turns into a wall per se, uh, but you put a three foot grave in with a two foot headstone, they get pretty close. Um, this is the idea of where one of these niches might, uh, excuse me, where one of the obelisks may go and where a lower niche feature, cremation lot with an upright marker, cremation lot with a small marker and then a walkway and the walkway would go all the way around. Uh, these are the back-to-back -back monuments. Lawn crypts, um, if you haven't seen one of these, they're a big concrete box. Uh, this has enough room for two caskets, one going in the bottom part and one going in the top part. This changes the operation dramatically and, um, because the ground crew isn't taking any dirt away. They, they take the top foot or so a cover off, put it to the side, take the cover off, put the casket in, put the cover back on, put the dirt back on. Um, there's no loading, there's no hauling, there's no installation. It's all done in one piece. And the idea is to put about 200 of those across the backside. Um, this does increase the cost of the project, but it also allows that to be recouped in the sale of the, of the, uh, of the grave rights. And just a couple of renderings of what this might look like uh, with, with the obelisk, with the uh, cremation niches, flush markers, upright markers, back-to-back uh, -back headstones. This is looking from the houses back into the cemetery. And this would be looking from the cemetery back over towards the houses. So we've got some of these uh, walkways, obelisk ideas uh, coming out. And in the corners, um, whether this goes into this building phase or not, but obviously to plan it to be out, to put cremation niches in. These are pre-engineered. There's about a half dozen companies that make these. And literally, other than putting the foundation in place, this comes off the back of a truck and is set down and the, and the delivery guy leaves. And it's drag them out it's ready. Um, one of the questions that Chris and I talked about uh, just last week, I think, uh, was some of the historic concrete flower pot urns and, and flower pot uh, containers that have accumulated at the cemetery through the years. Uh, we're still kind of dreaming on ideas on that, but it, it, it might include something going around with, with some type of planting, whether these are um, chrysanthemums or uh, some kind of pampas grass or something. I could see them, you know, envisioning something like that as one option around one of these, these new niches or somewhere. Um, the other idea, because it's going to be a walkway coming along the left side here, um, maybe we can do something with them along here. This is going to take a little bit of thought. Uh, it's, it's not in the bid package at this point, but I know there's been concern and question about using those, and I think there is an opportunity to do that. Um, so that was quick, um, but it's about 20 years of space, lots of choices, um, pretty straightforward site to, uh, to develop, and I think we can do bid specs in uh, in a month or so and get this on the street so you can build it this summer. Um, that's the, that's the project in a nutshell. Anybody else? Uh, 
Does your associate have anything just, to say? I just literally just almost gave you an entire cover letter. Uh, Jeff, Jeff was really here as a, as a learning experience right. so he can see how these go. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Joe, is there any possible uh, that we can get a copy of this presentation? Absolutely. Oh. I can do, I can make it a PDF. Plots, on the flower pots, if you should make them for the uh, ornaments, why not yet use the hydrangeas? That's the flower of the city. Uh, whatever we end up putting in there um, is certainly hydrangea would be an excellent choice. Um, the, one of the things Chris and I talked about is the, whatever happens with this, if they're planted in those pots, there's going to have to be some kind of an irrigation system in that uh, or whatever goes in them tends to, to dry out and die. <laughs> but we, we, I'm, I'm kind of thinking across this left side of the site over here might be a good spot for that. Uh, where the water line comes up, we could probably use some in here. Uh, there's, there's places we can use some of those. Right. It would be the ideal flower for that part, okay. if it's possible. The Yale Commissioner Rio. Commissioner Rio, do you yield? Yes. Okay. Any other commissioners? I think it's um. Uh, so I think it's an impressive plan. Um. I would love to get a PDF of it also. Uh, and I, I like the idea of using those uh, planters because of the historic significance of them or some of them. Um, so I, sooner or later, we're gonna have to make decisions on moving forward. Uh, like I said, we're running out of time and, and uh, I don't see any other plan that's gonna be better so, and I think uh, this is a great plan. I thank you for your presentation. And uh, I thank Chris for the work you've done on this. I know it's uh, a long time coming. I yield. Hey, any other commissioners? Commissioner Farias. Yes, I also like to thank uh, for the, uh, Dave and uh, Chris for this uh, presentation. It's very good. It is a very long time coming. And I also like to have a PDF. Um, it looks great. Uh, it's it's going to be a great um, looking project, and yeah. I'm looking forward. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. You have any questions? I also liked everything uh, I seen. Uh, I know I've looked at this extensively with uh, everything uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, now you said that uh, round thing that's in the corner with the uh, formation. Is there going to be another one you said in the other corner down towards the street? It, it, yeah, it's, it's master plan to have two or three of those in there. Um, okay. Bear in mind, each one of those is about a hundred thousand dollars. So you don't <laughs> buy them and let them sit there empty for 20 years. You, you buy them and place them as needed. And you guys mm -hmm. literally just put a similar facility over near the, uh, near the office building. Yeah. So w whether that's just planned out and, and set in there, you know, for future, or whether you actually expend the money and put them in at this point in time will be, be up to you guys in, in the finance question. Any other commissioners? Any other questions? We invited some guests here from the Historical Commission, um, Mr. Mancini and Kristen, and then we also have uh, Ms. Gail Powers that was with us last week. She's uh, with Friends of uh, Oak Grove Cemetery. Do you have any questions or like the uh, concept or anything? Mrs. Uh, Kristen? Um, so my question is, was Mass Historical Commission notified of the plans? Because there is a preservation restriction on the cemetery um, because of the CPC funds that were accepted to do the, uh, the archway. So were they notified? Was an Appendix A filled out? Uh, I was I was not aware of that. It, 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 if that needs to be done, that that can be addressed. But I was not aware of that. You saying that this is a uh, historic designation on it? Yeah, there's a there's a 30 year historic preservation on the, uh, a deed restriction put on it on the on the entire property. Yes. Really, I was not aware of that. Mm -hmm. 
can Chris, can you find a copy of that somewhere? I will look for it. I have spoken with Mass Historic on other projects done in the cemetery. Um, and what I have been told is as long as it's not um, modifying the historic structures on cemetery property, then they are not involved, but I will double check with them. Normally what Mass Historical Commission does is have you um, check with the local historic commission, which would be us. And uh, like, as when the, um, the drainage project went through and you had to come before us for that project, as well as the columbarium, it would, it would be the same thing for this. Cause normally they, they ask for the input of the historical commission, the local one, which is us. Well, we've got the presentation already for you, so. That's great. <laughs> Anything else? I have, this is house. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Chris this afternoon and he reviewed all of the five, went to his office and we were gonna walk the site plan. It wasn't necessary after reviewing all the PDF files. Um, I, I like what's proposed. Um, a couple of thoughts that I had as I'm reviewing it now, especially is the back line of graves that would abut that 18 foot buffer from between the property, the, the acre and a half and the houses sounds like it's going to be a wall of gravestones. And I just wonder aesthetically how that's going to look. And I thought I heard that it was going to be very little space in between each of them is what I'm understanding. And that especially spaces between them. And I understand it's because it's going to be a one plot, two depth person crypt, uh, single grave with two internments. Um, I just wonder aesthetically how that's going to look back there. It's going to be this wall of stones. And what happens over the course of time as things settle and move. And if you walk through the cemetery, you can see how over time, those the, the, the graves don't stay straight, best way I can describe them. So I just throw that out for some consideration if it's, um, if it needs to increase the space, maybe get rid of a couple of the single grave sites to, to give space for all of that possibly. That's one idea. I don't know what else is out there for availability. That was a quick thought of as we're having this presentation just now. Let me comment on that while we're at that subject. Okay. Um, with the landscaping that's proposed between the houses and, and these gravestones, the houses should not see it. So it's a visual issue from the cemetery. Correct. Um, yes, the stones are gonna be close together if you follow through with this. The cemetery could just as, I've seen other cemeteries, instead of putting upright monuments, put flush markers on, on the uh, lawn crypt lots. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will tell you right now, people like to see an upright headstone uh, uh, I, in New I England. And the, and the reason is, is snow. They like to see it in the snow. Uh, I agree. So I, I, I'm not advocating having flat stones back there at all. I prefer, yeah. personally, I prefer an upright stone. So that's not even, um, but I'm just questioning um, visually what that's going to look like stone up the stone up the stone up the stone with two inches between each stone or whatever. It's, um, it's, it will look different than the existing cemetery for sure. I know. Um, and and I, if, if, here's, here's the thing. If you go back a hundred years, every lot had 20 graves in it. Take the Lizzie Bourne uh, grave that you talked about earlier tonight. One stone in the middle of a 20 or 25 grave lot. The families don't do this anymore. You're lucky if they buy a two grave lot or a one grave lot. So the, it changes. Let me just make, make a comment on you said the stones are crooked and, and the uneven. Um, what is not shown under this plan, but if you can see my arrow here, um, there's a, a concrete foundation going underneath every one of these stones pre installed as part of the construction. Um, these are called a bar foundation and it's literally one long piece, let me okay. think of, one very long piece of concrete. So not only are they put in straight from the beginning, but they don't okay. settle. Um, so, um, All right, then I guess my, my oh, yeah. thank you for thank you for telling us that because we wouldn't have known that. But I guess my other concern is just the visual thing of having stone up the stone up the stone up the stone up the stone, uh -huh. creating like a wall and not necessarily individual placements of things with 
some space. I don't know what the idea of space it, is, but just that it's, it's, it it's not like entirely. Different. It's not entirely different from our existing single graves. I mean, it is a little tighter um, yeah. as far as uh, the space because the the niche the uh, lawn crypts will be in pre-installed, so we can actually get them closer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but the size of our current single graves and the size of the headstones we permit on those graves um, do allow them to get at almost as close as that proposal. I know. This is just, this not, is thought. not entirely, okay. but pretty close. You got um, lots, yeah. lots of options for that. I mean, if, if it was concerned, they make this is a larger slant. Uh, it's kind of yep. triangular shaped. You can make it without the base. They can make it half size. It's, it's how you restrict your monuments to the section. Okay. So it's, it's certainly, it doesn't affect the construction of the project, but it, it will affect how you sell these rights and how you operate it. So it's a decision. It's a good comment. Um, it doesn't need to be made for the construction. Let's put it that way. The other thought I had, which kind of got, but the question got resolved a little bit is something we're not going to be, going forward with it right away, since it's gonna cost $100,000, is the Columbine six-sided crypts at the corners that you would, two or three of them you had suggested in the in the plans. Yeah, My, these, guys, these guys. Yeah, well, I, I talked to Chris a little bit about that, of just the, the aesthetics of that also, that we're talking about a cemetery and the, the gates, the iconic gates that were erected in 1847. And the fact that some of, like the one that we have installed, it's there already, but it, it, it doesn't lend the ca a character to an 1847 cemetery. It looks like it's from the 21st century. It, it, we just bring it it is, you're exa it exactly is exactly right. But like that we can't <laughs> taper down instead of having a black shiny face to the oh, each the, front that we don't have some kind of granite with a, a not a they, not shiny friend, just to, to blend in with the with that, the aesthetics of the cemetery that we have already. That was, I guess, my that, point. That, that model is simply an example. As I said, there's a right. half dozen companies that make a dozen different models each. Um, the the delivery and uh, installation is the same on almost all of these. They put on the back of a flatbed truck and they bring a crane in and they drop them in place. Some of, them have, some of them have concrete interiors. Some of them have stainless steel interiors. Some of them have uh, granite interiors. There's all different kinds and different types. And, and frankly, I could, I could see somebody, um, you know, making the spaces out of, out of granite blocks, very much like your front entrance. And, and yep. you know, there's, there's lots of ways to solve that. Um, I guess as we go to bid and whether we decide whether we want to include one or two of these in, in the construction, um, that's a decision we'll Mr. have to Chair, make. If I can, please. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Perry? Uh, yeah, so I just think it's important. Um, Ms. Powers, how are you? Uh, Mr. I'm Crispin, welcome. thank you. Good, good to see you again. Mr. Crispin, thank you for your presentation. I, I think it's just so, Kristen, obviously, I know how, how close uh, historic uh, preservation is to your heart. Um, and Chris and I certainly understand the historic significance of the cemetery. Um, that's why from the very, very beginning, it's been the, part of the main conversation with Chris and myself to, to try to somehow marry the old to the new, right? So as you said, the cemetery was built in 1847, um, but we're operating in 2021. Uh, so things aren't built the same. They're not made the same. Um, so, but we, we make every decision that we're, we're making with this particular project um, with that historic significance in mind. Um, so that, that's not lost on us. So I completely appreciate that. And as Mr. Crispin said, there are several different types, uh, of those columbariums, uh, and, and we, we can work to, to, to continue to make sure that, that, that old feel element is in this project. That was very important to us, but I think it's also very important that everybody understands the significance of this expansion. Um, we don't have a lot of room left uh, in Oak Grove for another six expansion after this. Um, there would probably be a couple of areas that we could carve out down the road, but this expansion um, is what's going to get us through the next 20 to 30 years, uh, depending on the number of, of burials that we have there. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the future of Oak Grove. Uh, this, is, this is the only way for us to continue to operate. It's the only way for us to continue to 
to have a cemetery that we can offer to our residents, which is which is required by law. Um, and, you know, again, marrying the old to the new and making sure that we, we, we can we can have a, a way to continue to, to have that available to people and at the same time build up the perpetual care funds, which everybody on the board I know is very concerned about. Um, because those perpetual care funds is, is what's going to be left for us to be able to maintain the cemetery going forward. So I completely understand, um, Ms. Powers, how, how you feel. Um, but I just want to make sure that you're aware that that is something that we consistently think about uh, and will going forward. So yep. as we start to develop that and as we start to consider, you know, if we put a columbarium, we may not even, as Mr. Crispin said, that's not necessarily part of the project yet, uh, but it was something that we've spoken about. Uh, so we asked him to see, you know, how we could work that in. Um, again, to, to, to my point, the, the urns, right? The historic urns that everybody has been so concerned about and we, we realize need to be back in the cemetery. That was something that was important to us to work into this project, to your point, to give it that old feel, that old school feel. Um, so we will continue to work in that vein uh, to try to respect the historic element of the cemetery while at the same time ensuring the, the future viability of being able to do this. As I've said before, uh, I hope that this project uh, is, is done. And um, when, when this cemetery fills up and this expansion area fills up, uh, that none of us will have to be trying to decide where the next expansion project is because it's gonna last us that long. So, and I say that with, with hopeful uh, intent that everybody lives a very long and happy life, but I'd like it to last that long so that way we don't have to worry about it again. Next time Oak Grove needs an expansion, uh, we'll hopefully be home watching this on, on uh, access, public access TV instead of having to deal with it. So with that said, uh, I, I completely respect and appreciate everybody's comments. Um, and we'll continue as we always have. It's a collaborative effort uh, to, to take everybody's input uh, and try to make it work where we can make just about everybody happy. I know that's, that's not always easy, uh, but we're, we're working to try to do that. One other thought on this train, I don't know if you folks are aware of this, but over 50% of the population that dies in Massachusetts is cremated today. It right. is, it is, it's, it's yeah, grow, and it is. continues to grow. So it is a growing trend and, and we've tried to weigh that into the plan. Yep. Hey, any other questions? Yeah, Rick, yes. Rick Mancini, historic commissioner. Uh, I'm Mr. Rick Mancini. Uh, yeah, thank you. I would uh, entertain getting that uh, PDF file along with as much construction, David, uh, information that you could uh, muster up with the PDF file, uh, just so we could get a, a, a little more in depth and discuss this at our historic commission and, and, and definitely sit down with, uh, with all of the players here and, and uh, uh, work in their best interest. Uh, Gail had a great idea, and I'm sure there are other good ideas out there. Yeah, we, we, I'll be very happy to get the PDF uh, for you. Uh, we are working towards construction level drawing. So um, other than giving you planometrics at this point, um, if, if that's helpful, we can get you those too. Thank yes, you. As, as much construction detail as you possibly can would be much appreciated. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't want to. Quite frankly, we didn't want to put the energy into designing, you know, hard line drawings on stuff until we had a consensus on where we were going. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can get you some stuff, but it won't be ready to bid. <laughs> okay. Great. Having seen the the plans this afternoon with Chris, um, I can appreciate how much time and thought process went into this. Um, I think you've done a fantastic job personally, um, and you've thought of a lot of different things. And I think it all brings it around into what your thought is to, to increase the capacity in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, congratulate you for that. You've done a lot of thought and a lot of hard work started into the process. I used to have lots of blonde hair when I started doing this. <laughs> not, not anymore. <laughs> you did a good job. Commissioner Sylvia. I just have one question. I don't know if it can be answered at this stage, but I'm just gonna throw this out there. Uh, as far as what we saw tonight, the drawings, can David give us a, a rough ballpark figure 
as far as if it was as an example of what it, what you showed us today, a round number of what this project would cost. Chris and I have talked uh, in rough numbers about three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah, thank you. I yield. Commissioner Rigo. I have a question. On that wall of stones, the monuments, are they all going to have to be the same kind of a monument? It's going to be up to the cemetery department and what they want to do with their rules and regulations, how, how that goes. I would suggest they want to be all the same size, but whether the same color or Yeah, whatnot. they would have to be the same size if you want to make that wall the same size and maybe the same color. Make it look. There's, there's a, a lot of ways of looking at that. Some, pe some people love uniformity and some people despise it. <laughs> I understand, yeah. I know, but you both have done a fantastic job on this. I want to thank you so much. Hey, any other commissioners? Yeah, I just want to say a couple of things. Like Mr. Perry and Chris were saying to uh, Ms. Powers and Kristen and uh, Rick, we have talked about this over the last couple of months and that they've shown me the plans and, I, and, I, and that's one thing I even incorporated to them that I wanted them uh, earns that everybody's been talking about for the last five or six years to make sure this thing was, in, they were incorporated. Ideas I came up with them was, we always have like the Boy Scouts or somebody wanting to do something, a, a plant and that. These are ideas that Boy Scouts or anybody can go in there and decorate these urns uh, if we're uh, throughout the cemetery and that. The other thing is, Ms. Powers, you just came last week for the CPA fund and for the sign. I told Chris maybe even incorporating some of them urns around that sign to dress something up. And because that's going to be the sign that people are going to walk in and see that I want that to be like, you know, right there, catch their eye and know what Oak Grove Cemetery is about. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other concerns or questions? I'll, I'll just share with you what, what Chris and I talked about when we first talked about these urns. And I, I shared a picture with him of the flower clock in Niagara Falls. I don't know if you've ever been up there, um, but it's a, it's a mounded um, structure of, of earth and it's covered with flowers and the clock moves around the middle. I, I don't know if this is where this is going to go, but I can envision some type of a mound with, with the urns placed in it. With, with different colored flowers in it at different times a year or something like that. I think that it's, he caught me a little off guard the other day with the idea, so my juices haven't thought too much on this, but uh, we'll come up with something. Thank you. Anybody else? So uh, do we need to table this now until it goes to the Historic Commission? I think we need to move forward, Commissioner. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, you know, Historic Commission can vet it out, take a look at the PDF, have, you know, voice their input on what they feel. We need to really kind of start to move the project along, I, I feel. Um, you know, we need to get this done so that we can start to get bid specs out uh, and get to the point where, you know, we have a price, to Commissioner Sylvia's point, um, we need to know, you know, what, what we're going to be pulling out of perpetual care, how we go forward in funding this. Um, the longer we, we take, um, the, the closer we get to actually running out of room. Um, and, and, you know, Chris will tell you it's an everyday concern of his um, and, and it's a concern of mine that, you know, we're, we're, we're very lacking in space. Um, we don't want to get to a point where, you know, individuals, residents are coming in and looking to buy a, a lot. Uh, and we can't sell them what they're looking for. Uh, so I think we need to really start to move this along. Uh, Mr. Crispin's proposal um, showed everybody that we are, we are fully vetting this out and trying to, to do the right thing and make sure that the project goes forward and, and we go from there. Well, I have a quick, go ahead, Crispin. I, I can understand that, Mr. Perry, and I, I completely appreciate it. And I think it's a wonderful plan. I think a, a lot has been put into it. But Mass Historical Commission does need to be notified of this. And I mean, you, you still have to go through that, that avenue. Um, Commissioner, I, I, I Commissioner De Silva, what, what the board can do is to accept the plan and provided it meets Mass Historic and the 
we get we wait for the correspondence back from the historic commission we won't be able to move forward without that documentation but at this point it won't hold this project up another month i believe that this board can make a a a, a vote in accordance with mr what mr perry is asking that they accept the plan and would like the plan to move forward through for the Mass Historic Commission's review and approval and pending that approval, we don't have to have another meeting because this board will have already accepted it unless there are changes proposed by the Mass Historic Commission. Is that something that would be feasible, Kristen? In that yeah, respect? That makes, that makes sense, absolutely. Okay. So that's how this board can move forward without holding up the wheels of progress. They can say that they accept this plan They'd like to forward on the information to the Fall River Historic Commission and the Mass Historic Commission for their input and approval for this attachment A to be made out by, um, I would assume the firm or whoever is submitting this proposal. And then we can keep the wheels turning without waiting for another month or two of this board. Uh, I'm not sure when your board meets Kristen, or, or if it's within the um, next few weeks. I it's going to be the third Tuesday in March, assuming we can get that date. Okay. So. But we so would be able to send this all to the state. And the, one other thing, folks, Nancy, before you keep going down that road, um, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, if if this project or the columbarium that we even put in uh, to begin with, uh, the last project that we did, um, was under the purview of the Mass Historical Commission. Um, they were contacted with the columbarium um, and they they weren't involved. Uh, it, it, was, it was our purview on what we chose to do. Uh, and it was up to the board uh, to decide if that columbarium project went forward or not. Um, so while I completely respect everybody's opinion, uh, I'm not quite sure that, that, that it, it's gonna be a situation where we need the approval from the Mass Historic. Um, I think this is the board's decision to make when you boils right down to it. Um, and, and, and that's um, the fact of the matter, I believe. I'm not sure where it states that that is the case. Um, you know, Kristen, where we are going to need to get their permission, as Chris said, uh, when he spoke to them originally, as long as we are not altering the structures, the historic structures, um, that we can, we can move forward with projects as we deem we need to. Um, and I think it falls under the board's purview to decide that. Um, with absolutely zero disrespect to anybody, be sure that you understand that 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 statement comes with that that as well. But there is a there is a preservation restriction put on it by Mass Historical Commission because of accepting CPC funds. So everything still has to be under the purview of the the um, Secretary of the Interior. So it does actually have to go through Mass Historical Commission. You would I, need to I, fill out an Appendix A. I'd like to see the deed restriction, but I believe that the deed restriction, as Chris mentioned, would be for the historic structures within the cemetery, uh, not necessarily grounds work that we would need to do. I don't think the deed restricts us from, from doing things of that nature of the columbarium, which was done after the, the restoration project of the, of the, um, of the, uh, the gates. Um, to, to Ms. Powers, Powers's point, um, we did the columbarium after the fact, uh, and it looks much less historic um, than, than the gates themselves, and it, it's basically right outside the gate, um, or just inside the gate, I should say. So, I mean, I, I, I just going on history and, and the basis of what other, the other project that we've recently done um, and not getting, I mean, obviously we can have another conversation offline. Uh, Kristen, and, and we can figure it all out. Um, but I, I just, I respectfully just uh, disagree. I think that this is something that inevitably, once we contact Mass Historic and we get to the bottom of it, is going gonna, is gonna to inevitably fall with the board uh, to decide if this is something we want to fo follow through with. Um, with the input and experience and, and um, thought and care that we know that the historic commission puts into the things that they do. Mr. Mancini, Mrs. Powers, yourself, um, all of your input will be valuable and gathered and, and accepted and, and mulled over. Um, but I think at the end of the day, 
uh, the answer that's going to come out in the end is that it, it falls to the board to make that final decision. And that's just my opinion, but we'll continue to research that. I just don't want anything to get held up because uh, I think we really need to start moving on this. It's very important that, that we, uh, we move the viability, future viability of this cemetery forward. So with that, again, total respect. I have to agree with Mr. Perry. Uh, we're talking four years. When you really get down to it, four years is not a whole lot of time. Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be time to construct it and do the landscaping and, and whatever the work has to be done. Um, so we need, I believe we need to move on this. And again, to reiterate what Mr. Perry said, I respect everyone's opinion, all the invited uh, boards here and, and um and no disrespect is meant with this, but I think we really have to move on. But I do appreciate if we can get that legwork started and look into that with the Mass Historical uh, Commission. I'm sure uh, a phone call, uh, a quick email, a letter won't take that long to get a response. So I, I think uh, you know that it's a good idea to go down that road, but also I don't wanna wait to, to and hold this up because again, four years and limited space is going to go by fast. And that's only my opinion. Well, Are Chris you? and I will move forward. Uh, Chris I, has something to say. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll contact go the uh, Mass Historic Commission tomorrow. And just to, you know, piggyback off of the point, you know, uh, really time is of the essence on this. Um, our, our data is over five years. However, there has been um, a noticeable uptick in burials this year, obviously because of COVID. Um, I do think anecdotally there'll be a residual effect even after the pandemic is over because of the number of cremations. Um, so that that could eat into the estimated four years we have left with the burial space in Old Grove. And Kristen, I, I, I will touch base with you offline tomorrow, I, I promise you. And then again, we can continue that. So we can we can we can get to the bottom of all of that. All right. Okay, thank you, Jim. Okay. No, thank you. Okay, so do I have a motion to move this forward? <laughs> and um, what we said, we'll, uh, until we get uh, move this uh, project forward, and then Chris is going to find out from Mass Historical, and, and uh, Kristen will have her meeting. But let's move this project forward until we get our answers. I make a motion, accept the plan uh, at this time with the caveat that we hear from the Mass Historical Society and have all the players involved be notified of uh, the results of that. I second that. Roll call of vote of commissioners. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. You gotta unmute yourself, Helen. You gotta unmute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Wrong. Okay, and commission of the silver, yes. Okay. Commissioner inquiries. Any commissioner inquiries. I have one. Uh, our last meeting uh, regarding baseball field improvements, the organization was supposed to uh, um, get us some estimates. I believe the gentleman said he would have them to the park office the next day or so and we're a week or two later and i'm just wondering if anything was turned in nothing has been turned in i i believe on that meeting we actually had said that we would have to table it until our next meeting in march so that may just devil's advocate that may be why we haven't received it yet because we did tell him this was a special meeting so that that would have to wait for the march meeting so hopefully that's the only reason why we haven't received them yet the well, gentleman said he would send them in in the morning um, mm -hmm. when Commissioner Sylvia asked for it. So that's, he, yeah. Commissioner Sylvia had asked earlier. Well, one and other, I had told him that there was nothing. Um, I can contact them and one second, need that uh, information to move forward. But he said he had it and he would send it to Commissioner Sylvia in the morning. And I have not received anything. Okay. Commissioner, I mean, uh, Mr. Perry. 
Yeah, no, so just along Amber, Amber's, um, or Commissioner Burns's his point, you know, we did ask him as well to, to kind of structure it in phases. So maybe he had to go back to the contractor and ask him that, um, you know, so he could have very well turned in the prices that he had in hand and said, you know, this is what I have. I'm going to go back to the contractor and ask him to phase it out. Um, but he didn't do that yet from Mrs. Smith's point. So, you know, I think both sides, we can look at it. We can say, hey, you know, we can give him a little bit of time as long as we have before the March meeting. Um, but Nancy, if when you speak to him tomorrow, maybe you can say, hey, look, you know, just get us something. Um, I can send an email to them. If the contract is working on phasing it out, so be it. But get us what you have now because the board would like to see. Sure. Thank you. No, I agree with that. I would, I would like to see it. You know, and I want to get it the night of the meeting or the day before. I want to be able to, you know, look at it thoroughly. Great. Right, so I, I do appreciate that. Agreed. Are you done with BSC? Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Crispin. I, I, I multitasked you. for a second and I just sent Chris a PDF of tonight's presentation. But nice to meet you Thank all. You. We'll Thank be here you. for you for whatever we need and let's get this done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other commissioner inquiries? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Good night, everybody. Roll call. Roll. Uh, hold on. We're going to do a roll call vote. Okay. <laughs> roll call vote, Commissioner Rigo. Ellen, what's in that yes. glass? What are you drinking in that glass? <laughs> Water. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner DeSilva. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.